Fake Fix. Tariq Lamont Teller, aka Dirty Reek, born on December 23rd, 1979. He was raised in the southwest section of Philly. He grew up dealing with the normal struggles of the average kid in Philly. He ended up in a children's home and was released at the age of 17. He then met a guy by the name of El De Niro. El De Niro was one of the original members of Major Figures along with Gil and Wilo. El De Niro was telling him about the Major Figures movement and told him that he was going to put him on. Then Dirty Reek became a part of Major Figures. Dirty Reek claimed that he was never paid for rapping with the Major Figures. He said that he had three projects on the album and they didn't even put him on the front picture of the album. Jay-Z had offered to sign the Major Figures for 60 stacks apiece. And Reek felt as though Gil should have took that offer. Then Gil did an independent deal with Warner Brothers, and Dirty Reek was upset because he felt as though Gil should have only signed the deal that was beneficial for the whole group. Then all of a sudden, one day Gil noticed some of his chains missing, and that's and that he knew it was somebody that burglarized his house that knew where he lived at, that knew where his chains was at. So he felt as though it was very few people that knew where he, you know, where these items were located. So that's where the allegations came at, where he ended up blaming Dirty Reek because Dirty Reek wasn't even seeing eye to eye with him no more because of the, like I said, him not taking that deal with Jay-Z and then Gil signing the independent deal. So Gil calls up Dirty Reek and starts accusing him of taking his chains at this time. Dirty Reek was denying these allegations, saying that you tripping, bro, I ain't got your jewelry. So they going back and forth on the phone. All of a sudden, Gil say whatever he say, as far as, you know, letting him know, like, bro, if I don't get my jewelry, it's going to get nasty out here. After this comment was made, Dirty Reek puts his girl on the phone. A lot of people were saying that was his baby mom that wasn't his baby mom. So Dirty Reek puts his girl on the phone and his girl tries to cop a deal. You know, basically saying that Dirty Reek don't got your jewelry. You know, just don't, you know, don't take it, don't get physical. You know what I'm saying? It was on that type time. And after they had they back and forth, the girl was like begging for, for Gil to not do anything because at this time, you got to remember Dirty Reek was staying at this girl house and they knew where the, the girl lived at. And the girl, you know, like I got kids in here and stuff like that. She ain't want no drama at her crib. So as time go on, they still going back and forth. Dirty Reek dropped that infamous diss track that we all seen on World Star, where he pretty much aired Gilly out. If that wasn't the hottest, it definitely was one of the hottest joints that Dirty Reek ever dropped. To me, I think that might be the hottest joint I ever heard from him, period. He always pretty much had a little flow, but that joint right there, he went crazy on Gil. And these was like early 2000s, so after this took place, we was used to seeing people go back and forth music-wise, but we see Gil drop vlogs on him you know what i'm saying it wasn't no rap response or nothing he was just getting straight to the point and he was talking heavy so then he points out charges that dirty reek had got arrested for now whether he was guilty whether he was not guilty or whether he pled guilty the type of charges that he got accused of could destroy anybody's legacy. I don't care if you rapped, I don't care what the situation is. You know, it's a, that those charges was like, you know, bad charges, bro. And then on top of that, one of the charges was, you know, him basically cooperating. You know, that, that also popped up on his rap sheet. So 
even though they had the cooperation charge that they had pointed out, the things that overshadow even cooperating was the, you know, the issues, the allegations that he got charged for with the minor. You know what I mean? Everybody overlook, you know, him telling or whatever, or, you know, whatever the situation was. But it definitely one of the charges was saying that, you know, he cooperated. But that had all got overlooked due to the charges of the of the, the little kid stuff. So time goes on. So Dirty Week drops a John where he talking about he talking now. Now he a little more amped up. He a little more amped up. It's like an interview. Then he starts spitting. So in the interview, he deny the allegations of the stuff with the child. Then he starts spitting. So after this, you see a diss track. Excuse me, not a diss track. You see Gil and Bump jump on this vlog, and they got Dirty Reek Girl on this joint. You know what I'm saying? And they talking, and, and they got the girl talking. So the girl was saying that, you know, he did this and that to her kid, which was nine years old. And then also accuses him of getting paid by their neighbor, meaning their neighbor paid Dirty Reek, you know, to do oral on him, you know what I mean? And the neighbor was a man, you know what I'm saying? So she did these accusations and she also had claimed that her daughter never even said nothing about what Dirty Reek said. She claims that she found out through the kid's diary now what i can say is you know when you do a person that that does something like that you the lowest lowest person on earth bro like if nobody else deserved to be in the situation and being from the streets they say you never wish jail on nobody but at the end of the day death or jail should be to anybody that ever you know touch a kid inappropriately because you the worst type bro you know what i mean you should you should definitely get put under the jail or under the ground. But what I can say is, you know, just to just to look at it from Dirty Reek standpoint is this: when you look at that female that's on there, you can look at her and be like, you know, what is he doing with this? You know, and nothing against like white people or nothing, but like, what is he doing with this white girl? And you know, like look at her face, bro. Like just look at how she carry herself. Now this is Dirty Reek where at the time he still had a buzz. He was still a rapper. So when you see a girl like that, you just automatically, anybody from the streets would be like, Dirty Reek was using her. He was using her for her house. He was using her. She might've had a first of the month check, a regular paycheck, whatever it was. She probably was swinging it his way. It was definitely a benefit because the children that was in his in that house was not even his, you know what I'm saying? He did have his kid, I think, standing there also. But it was the it was the girl house, you know what I mean? So that's not hard to put together. You know, that that was his girl that was the girl house that he was he was taking advantage of that. And this is when I really realized that what happened was this white girl, she was salty because he was still dealing with his baby mom and dealing with other girls. Remind you, I said he also had his kid living there. But if you pay attention to the whole clip, and I can't play it, but you know, the link will be in the description if y'all wanna watch the whole job. She goes off after she, after she does the allegations, so she does the child allegations. After the child allegations, she was like, and my neighbor, which is a male, paid him to give him oral. So the male neighbor paid Dirty Reek for the male neighbor to go over and give Dirty Reek oral was the second allegation she gave. Then the third allegation that she gave was, it, the third one wasn't even an allegation. The third thing that she said was she started going off on, yeah, because it's BM and he messing with that dirty B and so once she started talking about the baby mom and you can tell that, you know, she realized that he was using her for her house and he was still dealing with 
with other women, whether it was his BM or whatever. And some women will go to the extent to destroy anything that you got, whether you a rapper, whether you could be a regular worker, man. You know, they, they put all this dirt on your name just to crush you because they felt like, you know, you hurt them. But I can tell by the way that she was talking that she was hurt inside of what, you know, however Dirty Reek was giving her the treatment. So, who knows what happens with those child allegations. Only, you know, him, the child, and God knows because it ain't like the mom court, courted in the act. But as time go on, after that, it gets dry. You don't hear nothing about Dirty Reek. He actually had got locked up, did a little time again, and then he came home, and then we seen him come out the clear blue, like, damn, Dirty Reek back. He does a little freestyle, he outside. He got his old heads with him, he freestyling. Like, okay, he back, he got his little, you know, five heartbeats, temptation hairstyle with the, the slick to the side joint in the park. We like, okay, he still trying to, you know, Get in, get in his lane and everything. So he spit, and the next thing we know, we hear that he died. <clears throat> you know that he was shot and killed in his house. Now we gotta remember, um, they found him with multiple bullet wounds inside his house in Southwest. Now, what I'm about to say is, you know, what I heard through the grapevine. And if anybody from Southwest is, you know, good with Dirty Reek, a part of his family or whatever, you know, DM me if you feel like this ain't accurate. Y'all know how I carry it on this channel. I always shoot for the, to get the, you know, the proper due diligence on, on all of these people that I'm documenting about. But from what I heard was, he was in his crib chilling and it was a nephew a nephew or somebody that was really close to him someone that had access to go in and out his house we got to remember this was 9 30 on a sunday morning we never heard nothing about no force of entry no door getting kicked in or nothing 9 30 in the morning multiple gunshots now whoever it was his nephew or family member or someone that was real close to him that had access to this house what I heard was that the person was smoking K2 and K2 have a lot of people snap out it affect everybody differently and you can have a bad batch of it but the person that did it did like immediately get arrested so as far as what I heard about it was you know, it was like a nephew, a cousin, somebody like that, that had access to his house and basically shot him up and killed him for no reason. Is what, you know what I'm saying, what was floating around. Like I said, any of my Southwest folks, anybody that know Dirty Reek, you know what I'm saying? If y'all feel like y'all got the full story, just reach out to me. If y'all got the proofs and the evidences, you know, that's the only way I'm going to ever do a part two on anybody. I make sure that, you know, the person is definitely solidified and really got ties with this person. But other than that, man, this SV Twitter is the hub blogger. You already know how I carry it. And right there, man, that's the murder right there. A Tyreek Taylor, man, a.k.a. Dirty Reek. You already know how I carry it. Make sure y'all like, subscribe, and stay tuned. To the content man i'm dropping sundays and wednesdays you know what i mean so y'all just stay posted man that's v twizzy there's a thin line between life and death an sv twiz film that shows the truth about what's going on in the hood You're gonna be able to help me out with this job. Like, I need this one bro bad. Like, I'm not trying. You've seen the rest. Now it's time to see the best. Starring Vodka Thousand Proof and SV Twiz. Real nice, real nice.
A hood drama that shows you the meaning of money, power, and respect. Torn apart. Yo, you really doing your thing with that girl. Black, what's up, nigga? I can't call it, bro.